Hey guys, I got a brand new video for you today, and today I want to look at something that I haven't really touched on. Obviously in the past, I've looked at Iridium Developer, Lightroom, and stuff like that, but a lot of you have asked how I process my RAW files, and I don't really use Iridium Developer just because the workflow is a little bit too slow. I know that Capture One is pretty good with Fuji RAW files, but I basically just edit in Photoshop. Um, my view might start cringing just because you don't really like how it processes the RAW files coming off the X-Trans sensor. But I just want to kind of go through how I edit Fuji RAW files. And I got a couple examples of projects that I'm just working on right now. Some stuff in the studio, some stuff outdoors. And just kind of run through my process of editing a photo and maybe it can help you out. Maybe it doesn't help you out, but it's just something to watch. I'm filming this on the X-T2 right now, since this is a Fuji video. I'm gonna jump right in right here. I think actually all these shots are with the X-100F, and that's because I'm currently working on my review. So I've been bringing that camera along with me on shoots, and it's actually pretty capable. And if we look here, uh, this shot is in the studio, and this is actually shot with the X-100F. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up this file into Photoshop and just kind of go through some of the settings that I use and how I process my RAW files. So we'll open the raw file up in Photoshop. And as you can see right here, I have all my settings set for what I like the color to look like. And as you can see, we do have the stupid softbox in the shot. So I'm gonna have to clone tool that out and get rid of it. What I'm gonna do though, is I wanna make this image actually black and white. What I ended up doing is I ended up actually finishing this file out in this color. But I think what I want to do is make it black and white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out the camera raw defaults. And I actually took this image uh, with the intention of making it black and white. If we look at the original that I popped up, the JPEG file actually is in black and white. I use Across film simulation and that's what I'm going to use on this. So I'm going to pop open the camera profiles here and we'll go down to Acros R, Acros, however you want to say it. And I actually really like the tones that are coming off this and that's mainly because with the Fuji system you can turn the film simulation on if you don't know that already and you can basically adjust your exposure settings based off how it looks with the film simulation. So I currently love all the color settings for these shadows and stuff but what I want to do is bring down the highlights a little bit so I'll zoom in here and show you what that looks like. So we're going to bring down the highlights just a tad bring down the whites just a little bit. The whites is basically the amount of contrast that is on your highlights. So if you pull up the whites, you can see that it starts to blow it out, but I want to pull them back. It smooths out the highlights a lot and then bump the clarity a tiny little bit. And that's basically it. I might bring down the shadows a little bit, bring the blacks up and we'll open that up. Now I really like how dramatic the shot is. I basically had the Octobox with my strobe right above her head and I had the grid on it. So this was actually on a white backdrop and you can tell that with the grid, it kind of makes the backdrop darker because it's not allowing the light to spill out onto it. But what I wanna do is I wanna clone out this Octobox out of the shot because it's kind of distracting. Just kind of brush it out. That's basically what I would do. You've cleaned up a little bit. But uh, other than that, I would basically just do some skin touch up and my secret weapon, which is an adjustment exposure layer. And I'll put that on right now. And basically what I do is I take the offset and add about 100 to it. And then I take the gamma and I move it up just down a little bit here. So if we take a look at this image now and I turn that on and off, you can kind of see that it smooths things out. Kind of gives it sort of vintagey vibe, but uh, it really doesn't affect it too much. It just kind of, I find that it actually smooths out shadows, but it actually just kind of puts a little wash over the entire image and that's how I would leave it. But obviously I would go in and do some skin touch up. Uh, she has really good skin as it is, so it's not really that big of a deal, but I go on with the uh, healing brush just spot out some of the stuff here. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it. If you want to see the final image, it's actually in color on my Flickr account. Then I would go in and I would take the sharpening tool and just sharpen up a couple little areas. 
Obviously the X100F isn't the best portrait lens. You're not gonna get the sharpest, craziest detail out of it, but uh, it does do a really good job. And as you can see, it's pretty capable. A lot of people would probably have no idea that this was shot with an X100F. Anyway, there's a couple other things I would do if you get down to the bottom here. You can see there's some footprints on the ground and I would probably just clone these out. I think that's what I did in the original image. I've actually seen in professional studio images, a lot of the people don't even touch this, the leaf footprint marks on the ground because they're really not always that distracting, but you can just go in and clean them up with the clone tool here. No one wants to watch me clone up marks. But basically that's what I would do. I'd just go around that and you know clean out all the lines and marks and stuff like that. All right, so I'm gonna close this up and we're gonna bring up a new image. So this shot was actually also shot with the X100F and I wanted to bring this image up because this is gonna play with a lot more of the colors and stuff and kind of give you more of how I process my colors. Uh, this is no different, it's the exact same thing for the X-T2, same exact sensor in it. So the first thing I usually do is turn on the film simulation, go up to the camera profile here and put Classic Chrome because that's what I always use. And I really love how Classic Chrome kind of pushes the shadows to kind of a greenish blue tinge and adds a bit of crushed contrast to the shadows. And that's really what I like here. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to this and I'm gonna play with some of the shadow adjustments. But first I just want to play with the highlights here. Obviously we have the overexposed background, but we can pull this down. And as you can see, the X100F actually has some pretty good dynamic range. Bring the shadows up a little bit. Oops. Bring the shadows up a little bit here. And bring the blacks down. Basically what the blacks does is it adjusts the amount of contrast in your shadows. So we still want to be able to see a bit of detail from the shirt in here. You don't want to crush it out too much. I might even bring the exposure down a little bit just to adjust for the background. Bring the highlights back up a tad. I think what I'm gonna do with this image is I'm gonna stack images. So what I'll do is I'll bring the background down just so you can get the best detail out of the background. And I like how that looks, but I'm gonna adjust a bit of the colors here. Go back to our camera profile settings and I'll put a little bit of a green tint to the shadows. And that's pretty good. We'll open that up. Now, obviously she's underexposed by a little bit, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reopen the same image again. So I'm gonna bump the exposure up so that she's more properly exposed. Bring these shadows down a tad. I'm gonna warm her skin up by going into the red primary saturation. Just add a tinge of red to it. And go back into the temperature and adjust the white balance up a tad. I like how that looks. We'll open the image up here. Now what I'm gonna do is kind of like image stacking, pop in this image over top of the other one. Now if you're cringing and you're like, Lee, that's like the weirdest, stupidest way to do things. This is how I do it. I'm just being straight up honest with you. This is how I would edit this photo. So I take the eraser now and I'd erase out the background so that the original background that we had in before with the background colors, because this is how I like the coloring and the shadows of the background. And I've just erased it out here, just like this. And this is going to give me the vibes that I want. Should probably get rid of that construction sign. Don't necessarily love that too much. Go in here, drop the opacity back a little bit. And just run along the arm here, just to get rid of that. Now I'm really loving the color tones here. This is basically what I would do um, in order to get the background to look the way that I want it to. And so that she's bright enough in the middle of the image, then I'd copy those and merge them together. And then basically I'd come in here and do some skin touch up. I could do some frequency separation depending on how bad the skin is. Her skin's pretty good. But 
that's basically all I would do. I wouldn't do a ton to this image. And then again, my secret sauce, my secret weapon, putting in an exposure adjustment layer, putting the offset to 100, and then bringing the gamma down a little bit. Yeah, just down a tad, about to there. Um, I'm seeing one thing now that I'm zoomed out. There's a little white speck in the hair up here. And then sometimes I'll go in and sharpen the eyes up. Again, this is the X100F. Not really made for portraits, but it does work. So zoom out here. I really love the color tone of these images. This is exactly what I would do with this image. And yeah, that's basically all I want to walk you through. Uh, maybe that helps. Obviously, I do most of my stuff in Camera Raw. Sometimes I'll put in a color adjustment layer and play with the coloring. Um, but most of the times I just play with my shadows and my colors right in Camera Raw. Um, for me, that's my workflow. And basically, you can save out these profiles. So when you bring in another image, so I'll just show you what I'm talking about here. I'll reopen up this raw file. Hit save settings. And then what I'll do is I'll just save this as X100F street. Save that out. I'll just hit cancel because what I'm going to do is I'm going to open another image from the exact same shoot. <clears throat> so these settings are exactly the same. I'm able to just apply the preset that I made. So we called this X100F street and it applies the exact same settings that I had on the other image for this image. Anyway, hopefully that helps you out and shows you how I process my raw files. I really do it in probably a weird way other than how other people do it. I know a lot of people just rip through it in Lightroom. I don't necessarily love Lightroom. I've actually been using Lightroom Mobile on my iPad and I'll make a video about that later. Hopefully this video was something you enjoyed. If you want more videos like this, I can rip through tons of different tutorials, how to do color grading in video and other things like that. But yeah, uh, next thing I wanna kinda maybe make a video on is skin touch up. Uh, showing some frequency separation. I do that sometimes uh, Just for this I didn't really have to do much because her skin was good already But if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you dislike this video give it a thumbs down twice I'll see you in the next one